welcome to Lard in Action, where we are ready to dip our toes further into O Group and take a look at the initial game setup phase. Uh, we've asked uh, Dave and Christopher to run through that for us and show us exactly how their uh, forces are going to be setting up on the table at the start of the game. And this obviously ties in with the programme that we've uh, produced in where Dave and I are discussing the mechanisms and what they're there for. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, please do so. And that will give you some of the thoughts behind the rule mechanisms that we are highlighting here today. So let's move up to Studio 2 and let Dave and Christopher do the talking. OK, we're now in the deployment phase of our Eastern Front scenario. So how do we deploy forces uh, in a normal what-if scenario? Basically, both players have a set of deployment dice rolls. This is normally uh, 9d6, and the different scores on the dice represent different modes of deployment. So, uh, for instance, if you're the defender and you rolled fives and sixes, that permits you to put ambush units on the table, if you rolled scores of four, three or two, that permits combat patrols to go down and scores of one indicate the effects of the attacker's opening barrage. So what the, attack, the, uh, sorry, the defender would simply do is grab his nine dice, he'll roll them and that will then dictate what he can do at the start. Okay, so the defender has rolled the following scores. He's rolled uh, two sixes, two fives, which gives him four ambush units. He's rolled a three and a two, which gives him two combat patrols. And he's rolled the worst of all rolls uh, for the defender. He's rolled three ones, which is the uh, his side of the effect of the opening bombardment, which gives him three turns of interdiction. So I'll just quickly describe what those mean. So ambush, what does that mean? It means he can deploy a unit, either a platoon or a section, in cover, in ambush, anywhere behind his forward defensive line. Now, for the purposes of this scenario, the Russian forward defensive line is this road. It cuts all the way across the table, so he can literally deploy anywhere up to that road. So, for instance, he could deploy a 45mm anti-tank gun in this orchard. Now, he wouldn't put the model on the table, he would simply write down where it is, and that's just as simple as 45mm AT, left-hand side orchard, as simple as that. Um, or he could have, say, uh, MNG in, in a built-up area sector. Um, the Russian player will go over the reasons for his ambush units a bit later on. So that's ambush units. Obviously, the Defender can deploy those uh, to opportunity fire or fire at the attacker uh, in his phase or of his choosing. So they are quite powerful units. The three and the two gave the defender uh, combat patrols, which in this game we're just representing with poker chips and we've given them a small colour coding on them so we know which company they belong to. Now a combat patrol represents uh, a forward recon team or scout team from your company or your platoon holding a certain position so they can then bring up the rest of the, the platoon or gun section or whatever it will be on their position. So again, for instance, you could deploy a combat patrol in the orchard. That means in the following turns, the Russian defender could deploy a platoon onto that combat patrol. You can deploy them pretty much where you want but there's a maximum of three combat patrols per company. Obviously, the Russian player, he's only got two, so he's a bit limited. Finally, we come to scores of one. Now, ones for the defender are interdiction turns. This means that for the first three turns, when he's attempting to deploy units onto a combat patrol, so I'll put that back there in the orchard, the attacker gets an opportunity to hinder that deployment and it's as simple as a d6 roll. If the attacker is successful the deployment fails and the order is lost. If the attacker is unsuccessful 
then their deployment can go ahead as normal. So it just represents the uh, bombardment on your rear lines or your, your forward uh, uh, trenches may have caught your platoons off guard and they're just slower to deploy into forward positions. So that covers the defender's dice rolls. Okay, so we now move to the uh, German deployment dice rolls. This is very similar. So what's the German roll? He's rolled uh, a six and a five. So instead of ambush units, the attacking player gets actual on-table units. So he can deploy uh, full platoons or sections, whatever he wants. Now we've only got two which represent perhaps units that have been on the start line ready to go, or maybe even slightly ahead of schedule. You can deploy those where you wish, maybe with one in each company, bearing in mind the Germans have got one and two companies up. Um, you can put them where you like. The only uh, issue to bear in mind for the attackers is their start line. Now this is always 12 inches in, and all attacking units, whatever they are, must start behind their start line. So. You could put them wherever you wished, as long as they were no more than 12 inches forward. Next, the German player rolled five combat patrols. Now, as we've discussed before, we know what combat patrols can do. It's no different for the attacker. So he'll have a good amount of those, which he can split between the two companies. Now, the maximum a company commander can deploy at, what, at any one time is three. So maybe it would be three to one company and two to two company. Finally, uh, the scores of one represent the casualties on the Russians inflicted by the German opening barrage. Now, the first score of one indicates that the Russians have lost one infantry platoon from their basic battalion. Now, if you recall from the previous video, the Russians had a full battalion. So now, one of their companies will be reduced by one platoon and that's for the Russian player to decide where that loss comes from. There is a special rule for Russians losing men in an opening barrage, but I'll let the Russian player cover that. A second one represents disruption to the HQ. Now, in the beginning of a game, an attacking HQ starts with a total HQ order of three, and the defenders start with two, bearing in mind their maximum is both six. So the second one will reduce the Russian Battalion HQ order total by one, reducing it to one, which just represents perhaps disruption to the HQ in the command and control process. And that is what's happened to the Russians. All right, so for the Russian deployment, the first thing is to deploy your company commanders just to help distinguish where the boundaries are. So for two company who will be defending the left hand side of the road, I'll place him just behind the orchard here. And for one company who are defending the right hand side of the road, I'll put him in between the hills behind the T-34 wreckage for a bit of cover. Now I do have four ambush units. The dugout does give me an automatic ambush if I want to put something in there. So that would be five in total. And for both sides, the foo is also an automatic ambush. So for ease of play, I put him up on the hill here just so we can see where he is. Now, I'm actually going to convert one of my ambush units into a combat patrol. So I'll take one dice, move it to a four, doesn't matter. The reason why I'm doing this is because there's not a lot of high ground that isn't blocked off by forests or other hills. So it potentially isn't useful to have a lot of units already up in potentially areas where there isn't good line of sight. So I've got three ambush units, potentially four, if I want to put one in the dugout. So an example of where I want to put one ambush unit is this forward forest right here. Mainly because I have three turns of interdiction. Now, I need to hold off the Germans as long as possible to stop him penetrating and make it even more difficult for me to bring on reserves. So if I can hold him near my uh, forward defensive line for as long as possible, it will mean by the time he can penetrate through, the interdiction would have worn off and it would be a lot easier for me to bring on troops on. And I do have therefore three combat patrols as I converted an ambush into a combat patrol. So the first one I'm going to put on the far edge of the left hand side board there to hopefully block off any advancement on my left hand side. I'm going to put one in the far right hand side BUA and finally I'm going to put one in the left hand side BUA off the road. And that basically is the Russian deployment. 
Okay, so we now come to the German deployment. Now the Germans, as the attackers, will go second. They'll deploy after the Russians, which gives the attackers a, a little bit of an advantage. So, what am I going to do? Well, if you recall, I said I would have one company deployed in the ravine, so I straight away I'll put the company commander in that deployment sector. And then over the other side of the road, I had two company, so I'll place him near the field. Okay, that's my uh, company commander's done. I've also got a forward observer who's allowed to be in ambush as an extra unit, and I've deployed him in the central high ground to hopefully give him a bit of a good line of sight to bring in artillery. So what did my dice rolls give me in addition to those deployments? Well, I got a six and a five, which is two on-table units straight away behind the start line. Remembering again that the start line is 12 inches in for the attacker and he can't deploy any further forward. So the two platoons I'm going to bring on are simply two infantry platoons. I'm going to have one with each company. So I'll deploy one in the ravine next to the company commander there and I'll deploy the second one next to their company commander behind the hedge in the field. Okay, that's those deployed. So now I've got five combat patrols and that's pretty good. It offers me quite a bit of flexibility, able to push forward, to probe forward and deploy units off those combat patrols. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place three combat patrols with, I'm going to go for two company because they are my really my main effort. If you recall, three company was going to consolidate, so I'll go for three there, which is actually the maximum any one company commander can deploy at one time. So what I'll do is I'll place one combat patrol just at the edge of the woods. I'll have one combat patrol perhaps in the corner of the field, and I'll have one combat patrol on the edge of the cornfield there, which is about the maximum it can go. Now, I've got two, and I'll deploy both of those uh, with one company, and I'll have one. Let's go for the wheat field further over, as far uh, over as I can go, to perhaps try and exploit that flank. And then I'll have one in the woods just in front of the company commander, so as they can push up through the ravine and deploy if necessary. So that is my basic deployment. The remainder of my units are in reserve and I'll bring them on uh, over the following turns. Finally, I have rolled the two ones, which represent casualties on the Russian battalion from my opening bombardment. Now, one one removes a platoon from the Russian uh, battalion. If you recall, he started off with a full battalion, three companies, all with three platoons. And the Russian player can decide which company loses that platoon. The second one will represent a loss of one headquarters order from his battalion HQ. Now we start the game with two HQ orders for the defender and three HQ orders for the attacker. Because the opening bombardment was effective, perhaps cutting his lines of communication or just disrupting the HQ, he'll lose one and he'll now start the game on one. Had I rolled another one, I would have inflicted a further casualty any section across the battalion. But I'll settle for two, that's a pretty good start. So there we are, another interesting run through from the guys uh, running the game for us. We're going to be back next time and start looking at command and control, which is really at the heart of any rule set that's worth its salt. So we hope you're going to join us for that and we can start to see the action unfolding on the tabletop. We'll see you soon. Thank you.